right, so the image here, you can kind of do this with me. Just hold the club up right now. I'm going to do it left-handed so we're moving in the same direction. I want you to squat and turn. Okay, now launch and turn. Okay, squat and turn. Launch and turn. You don't have to turn back to face me at this point. So squat and turn, launch and turn. Squat and turn, launch and turn. Now from here, let your back foot come up and face the target. It's basically what we're looking for in the golf swing. Now your stance is so wide, you can't get off your right foot onto your left foot. There you go. So squat and turn, launch and turn, and finish. That's basically what I'm looking for in the golf swing right now. Pretty simple concept, yeah? Let's see if we can do that with the golf swing here. So squat and turn, launch and turn to the finish. Okay, so did you have more speed than you normally have? Like yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keep going. So I see a two other things happening in your conditioning, by the way. You are sort of getting locked up around your hip girdle and your lower back. I'm sure from the knee injuries or other things in the past. I, I spin every day. Okay, oh, there we go. So we need, to, we need to get those joints freed up a little bit more. Okay, and this is just something, even just doing squats for me. Grab the club like this, okay? You're gonna squat and reach up. Good, now, and only go as far as you can. You don't need a deep squat. Just squat, go up, and come down. Squat, go up, come down. When I make you lift the club up like that as you squat, you keep your torso in better posture. And it actually helps with what we call neurological communication. When you do things in the opposite direction, your neurological system opens up, it works better. And when you squat, now you're kind of kicking your knees in. When you squat, make sure you feel your glutes. There you go. Glutes and thighs are doing the work as you squat. You feel that? Great. So doing some of that, you're going to start to feel the core and the hips work in a position where you're not locked in so much. Back in there now, I want to see you do this sort of squat, turn, tall, fi tall finish image. Squat, turn, tall finish. What's interesting, if you were good at the lateral direction, yeah. or just turn, 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 and the other ones weren't very, you know, needed to be very active, you wouldn't be here. Because there's lots of good teachers out there teaching players how to do the lateral stuff that need to do the lateral stuff. There's lots of teachers out there teaching the rotary stuff for the ones that need to be more rotary. But the guys that need, need more verticals, nobody's teaching them. Because everybody says it's wrong. You're coming out of posture, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's a bunch of bull. You need to come out of posture. Peter Sr. Go watch Peter Sr. He's your new idol. Peter Sr. on the senior tour. The guy stands out of posture. He's 60-something years old. He's won four straight or five straight decades on the Australasian tour. Great ball striker. So squat and turn in the backswing. Tall through the ball. There you go. Squat, turn, tall through the ball. There we go. Now, did that have more speed? It did, didn't it? Mm -hmm. There we go. Now, it's not even a full finish yet. You're not even all the way off your right foot. And I can tell you definitely have some stability issues because when you try to get all the way up on your left foot, Try to get up. Instead of being able to stand over here like a flamingo, you fall back a lot. Yeah. I mean, even doing this, even you know, without a club though, because this helps you cheat, right? So you know, move over, get your hip over this foot. Yeah, really want to Yeah, and then stand. There we go. Now back and over this foot, and then bring it up. So down, over, then up. Take your time because it's not a hurry thing. It's a, we got to get that joint in position. There we go. I mean, just doing that every day is going to improve it. Like, people will have you step on the disc and stuff, and I have the disc upstairs. Why the heck would I have you do it on the disc right now? you got to do it on a stable surface first, right? If you can't move over the joint to pick it up and be stable, we got to work on that. Move over and get stable. Move over and get stable. You can just bring it straight up. Exactly. 
good. There you go. This side's better. And isn't that funny? You play golf. So at least you're better on your front side, which is what we need. Well, the reason being, this is my first. I got into this one. I was 18. Oh, okay. So I walked on this one. Well, we ought to be able to, you know, once we get that taken care of and you know, do some strengthening, it ought to come back, right? Oh, sure. I'm missing a muscle in my right shoulder. I had a bone boost and tendon. had an acromioplasty. had four muscles atrophy. Two of my pec minors were, were shredded like they said shredded beef or beef enchilada. They said I'd never play golf again. I went back to tour school twice after that. We just have to do what we have to do, right? And once you can do it, we'll be close. Once you can actually get to here, yeah? Then what you have to do is be able to go here, up, turn, back, down. Up, turn, back, down. So that we're a ways away from that, aren't we? So once you can give me the just the this one over this one over this one. When you're good at that, and you can do it holding on something for a while, because you almost need the support to help you. I can do it. Yeah, just, just a little. Idea. Exactly, just a little. Now, when you feel like you don't need those anymore, you take them away, right? And then when you can do that, and you're confident in that, then we can add a little turn in there. It's just conditioning. We can get this back to where it needs to be. Does that make sense? So back to the action now. Squat, turn, tall, finish. Very good. So how much more speed was in that than what you normally feel? A lot more. Exactly. Now it's like the demonstration I did. There. Choke down because this is longer. So if all I do is squat and swing, a lot of speed. It's because what's happening. I'm using this vertical force and I'm sinking this up with it. It makes the pelvic go faster. Okay, now the one thing that has to happen, you've had a lot of this sort of trying to get width out here, right. which is lateral motion. Right. That's work in the, in the width direction, which is a lateral direction. I'd rather have you feel more up and down with your arms. Because if I can get my arms to go up and down and then stand up, I mean, was that a strength thing? Obviously not. You're you're strong enough to do what I just did. If you just got into the ground enough and you set this down. Okay? So I don't want you feeling so wide now. When you squat and turn, I want you to feel like this stuff's just going to hold that in a position. See, from here I can create speed with the club head panel. How am I going to create speed with the club head around here? I need rotational force. go. Now wow, how much speed was in that? It pulled you all the way around, didn't it? And now the ball just went higher and further. So what you just added in, you gave me the basic, your, your fundamental action, your engine, is this corkscrew motion. This corkscrew down, turn, launch, vertical, and then turn enough to face your target. The turns in your swings are like bookends. You turn early in the backswing as you're squatting. From here, all we're trying to do is get to vertical. Now, I can't get vertical without having some turn facing back towards the ball. That turn is just accommodating the vertical motion. It's not trying to add power. Once I've got the vertical motion and I've sent that club down, I just have to turn on this end just to face my target. So what you're adding into that motion 
is this levering of the club up and down. Now fold that club up. You feel the weight of that club head? Yeah. Send it into the earth. There, you had to send it down to get it into the earth, didn't you? Yeah, constantly I never took it to That's right. Now, send it down and stand up. Okay, it just didn't stand up soon enough. That's good. That's actually how I demonstrate it, by the way. Watch this. If I stay in posture and I send it down, my divot's going to be back here somewhere, right? Now, if I send it down and get up a little bit, my divot was right there. See that? If I send it down and I get up sooner, my divot was up here, not as much divot. So the vertical motion is creating room for you to send it down. So timing for you becomes timing the vertical axis. You know, we're always told timing is in the horizontal direction, like right. baseball. If I step and I turn and I'm late, it goes to right field. If I swing and then I turn, it goes to left field. Well, the reason why we need horizontal timing in baseball is we swing in a horizontal plane. The ball's pitched into a horizontal plane, right? Well, for golf, the ball's on the ground. Now, if you're one of those people that can have a perfect postural angle so that it goes around the circle of my posture to get to the ball, well, then I will look more at the horizontal rotary type action. You're not one of those guys. You can't create enough rotary speed to do it. You're not a lateral guy, so we're not looking for it in the lateral width direction. You're a vertical guy. So as your body's working the vertical, your arms have got to be working the verticals. That's how we sync them up. That's what timing for you is. Okay? Good. Squat turn, tall finish. There we go. So how much more speed is in that than what you normally have? A lot. Is that more enjoyable? Very good. A lot more speed than you're used to having. By the way, this club's an inch over. You can get this club to the ground when you're getting taller, can't you? Yeah. You're actually taking, you're starting to take divots. Not big ones, sort of, sort of skimming divots, right? But you always picked the ball off the ground before, didn't you? Yeah. So this is really going to help having a club that fits you. Squat turn, tall finish. Find that feel. Squat, turn, tall finish. Okay. It's all right, stay with it. Just got to get taller soon. Squat, turn, tall finish. I guess I try and finish like I'm going tall before I swing the club. Is that the idea too or no? Yeah, I mean, the taller you can get the sooner right now, the better. I don't think you can get too tall too soon right now. Because okay. remember, what's the engine? The engine is the squat, turn, and launch motion, okay? And the arms have got to work with that to sync up so that it all works, you know, efficiently for you. Okay. So squat and turn, there you go. Launch tall, there we go. There it is. And you notice when your launch gets better, the ball goes higher? Because that's vertical force. When you actually apply the vertical force properly in the golf swing, the verticals in the golf shot get, get better. Your shots have been getting lower and lower and lower over the last six years, I bet you. How, you can't play that way. You can't carry anything. You can't stop it, right? right. Well, now we're starting to get trajectory again. You can play the game with trajectory like this. Right? Yep. And it still has good enough feel. Good. Squat, turn, launch, finish. There you go. A lot better, yeah? That was really good. Mm-hmm. I do say so myself. Mm-hmm. Well, as long as it, you know it's better for you, we're in the right direction. Great. You know, my main concern today, for right now, is let's get this down, let's get this with one club, right. 
and then maybe in the last hour today we'll do some with some longer clubs and a driver you know tomorrow let's come back let's work through the bag so that because there's going to be these little questions where do i put the ball you know what's the angle attack all that sort of stuff for the different clubs and i'm going to have you work on these what i call athletic swing sayings so as you go through your bag do you need lots of power with the pitching wedge Not really. No. You drop it in on the target, you're pretty happy, right? Yeah. Now, you get to an 8-iron, you need a little bit more power, maybe moderate power. 7, 6, medium power would be nice, right? Oh, yes, Just yes. like this. Now, but you get to a driver, you want a lot more power, don't you? So, there's these power applications I want you to understand. Okay? So tomorrow, as we work through the bag, I'm going to show you what I call power stacking and how that relates to the clubs for you. And then you may have some short game questions at the end tomorrow. Oh, I do. Yeah, and that you know, so that's sort of the plan here, based upon what we talked about. And so, the reason why I just gave you the plan now, just so you know, is you were in a groove. It doesn't do you any good to stand here and just be in a groove and keep swinging. So, I need to distract you. So, as a coach, what I do is I distract you throughout the the time we work together, because now I want to see can you get back to squat, turn, launch, finish. Can you get your attention back on it? Squat, turn, launch, finish. Very good. And you're going to notice stuff like sometimes the ball goes a little right and sometimes it goes a little left. We're going to need to figure that out, right? Yeah. Okay? Oops. That's okay. Let's grab that one behind you there. Great, that was a really good one. Now where are you facing? There. Right? Where'd the ball go? There. Yeah. So part Part of the reason for your swings going right when you feel like you made a good swing is you just don't have enough range of motion. This ability to get on this leg, turn, get your knees together and face your target. We need to have that conditioning where you can get up on your front leg, turn, and face at least 90 degrees. Okay? But right now, you're actually going to have to aim a little left just so you can finish straight, right? But if you do an, this exercise for me, together, actually. Yeah, you can you're hold that if you want, or, you know, stand on your left leg and use this for balance. Okay, now, from here, turn your hips and squeeze your knees. How far can you turn your hips? Stress here now, don't you? So stand up. Good. Now turn around the front leg. But without falling, though, keep this way. Good. You have to stretch that. So what I want you to do, and it's better to do it with your hands on your hips, okay. but you need the stability to do it. Stand, turn. Once you hit, as far as you can go, stretch it. One, two, three. Now come back. Okay. Stand up on that leg. Turn. Stretch it. One, two, three. Come back. If you give me 25 of those a day. Don't you think you're going to gain more range of motion in that direction? Sure. Sure. Now, we want balance in the body. I'd like to see 25 on both sides. If 25 gets it easy, give me three sets of 25. Or two sets for a while, and then three sets. But you're going to work up to three sets of 25 in each direction. All right. Back to the golf swing now. So so for me right now, I should aim. I'm aiming at a... Well, let's just keep watching it. We're not okay. trying to get to a target right now. Okay. We're going to just keep watching it. So squat, turn, launch, finish. There you go. That time you got all the way around. Very good. Yeah, that was weak. Yeah. But by the way, a couple of times you've got it in a round to face the target and the ball went there. Right? A couple of times they went straighter. So it's not that you can't get there. It's just that you got to be at 100% to get there right now, which is hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, 
Well, you forced it around a little more, so it came around a little more. Okay. Yep. Keep finding that feel. Squat, turn, launch, finish. Squat, turn, launch, finish. There it is. Now at least you got your chest all the way around that time. Your hips didn't make it all the way around, but your chest did. You know, now, that would sort of be the standard play for right now. This is about all I can ask for you for right now until we get more range of motion in the hip girdle. Kind of to recap that, we're on the club. All right. So for for so many years, you were told stay down, stay in posture, keep your head down. Right. So you come in, even with the shorter club, you come in, you're staying down, you're staying down, you're staying down. If you extend, the club goes into the ground back here somewhere. You can't extend, so you pull your arms in. There's your chicken wing. Okay, now I'm giving you room to get taller. Now you're going to have to stretch your arms to get down. So people in chicken wing, chicken wing, because there's not enough room between their sternum and the ball. You give them more room, they stop chicken winging, they start extending. Okay? So squat, turn, launch, finish. There we go. Again, you know, you gotta allow some of that to evolve because you can't think about everything at once. Really, when you're like throwing a ball, it's an action. So you need an action here, and we need to have the basic action. You'll learn to add the refinements, and that'll make it better. Okay, so it's squat, turn, launch, finish is, is the package here. That's what we're looking for: squat, turn, launch, finish. There you go. That's the best one today. Funny, you you relaxed on the details. You stopped thinking about the club. You stopped thinking about the divot. You gave me the good engine: squat, turn, launch, finish. The club happened to just get down there, and you launched that sucker better than anyone today. You allowed the arms in the club to do their job instead of trying to manipulate it. Right? That was a lot better. So stick with that: squat, turn, launch, finish. I think I want to think about this. Closer here. Yeah, going up. Just it could, look. If you go, take it straight up. Now, aren't you going to come more down? Yeah. Without even thinking about it, aren't you? But when I take it up like this. Yeah. So, you know, all I want you to do when you go back, don't extend wide. Just take it more up naturally. Whatever. There you go. It's going to come down more now. Okay. But the the key is focusing on the body. Squat, turn, launch, finish. That's okay. Almost. Squat, turn. Yeah. Squat, like that. Just yeah, so let's do this again. Just so you understand. If you want to know the particulars, let's talk about the particulars. Here's your hand. We tested this earlier today. Yeah. Right. Your hands go to your right pocket. There's your linkage. Now turn. Okay, squat. Here, now. But the right arm bellows is just folds up. It's going to feel like that to you. I just but I still go. Just like that. Doesn't that feel more up than what you used to do? Oh, yeah. That's all I'm asking for right there. I mean, I shouldn't do that. No, you're not a vertical hinger, so you're not going to go straight up. I just asked you to try that just so, to get the image. If you went straight up, you'd come more straight down. Right. So all we need is more up than what you're used to. Just a naturally more up than what you're used to. That's better. Where are you facing? Well, you're facing where the ball went. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so that was a good swing. If the ball goes where your finish is facing, you made a good swing. Yeah, so what I, what I want you to look for, when you make the squat and turn, are you in a squat where you really feel like you can launch up out of it? Or are you in a squat where you feel like you're stuck? Yeah, we need the reflexive. There you go. We need that squat where you feel like you're going to be launching up out of it. I mean, let's face it. When you do the squat, turn, launch, finish, and that club fills the gap, I mean, that's the best ball flight you've had in how many years? 
Okay, so I mean, why would we do anything different than what we're working on here as far as swing technique? We don't. We just do drills and exercises to get better at it, and we condition ourselves so that we have more endurance, more range of motion, more flexibility, more stability. Those are the things we have to condition our body for. Okay? And focus mainly, there you go. Focus on the quality of the squat launch finish. There. Trust me, if you do a good squat, the proper type of squat, turn, launch, finish, you're gonna get a lot of good shots. Yeah, this feels, in other words, when I get to the back where I feel like I'm the most stable is where I start. Exactly. If I go this far, I'm not you, you, you can't come out of it. Right. Like, go down more. Okay, don't you want somebody to put a chair under you? You don't want to stand up, you want to sit down, don't you? Yeah. See, now you're in a, a, a squat where you want to, there you go. That's as far as you can go and still launch. If you go any more down than that, you know, you, you, hey, can, can you put a chair under me so I can sit down? Because I don't want to stand up. <laughs> okay. Good. Squat, turn, launch, finish. That's great. Where are you facing? Right where the ball's going. Yeah? So if the ball goes where your finish is facing, you've made a good swing. There, very nice. Finished a little bit more left than the last one, so the ball came around a little bit more. Much better. Now that'll play. Be a lot more fun out there with the boys, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that type of shot is inspiring you to play more golf instead of, should I go bowling, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
you go. Stay with it. Face force, bunt it down the corridor. Okay, stay with it. Got to find that awareness. Got to use that arm swing to send it down the corridor. It's like that arm swing I'm supposed to make all the time. We're not about that here. Well, you need the you need the same eye hand coordination that's in that arm swing, even when you're doing the body swings as the engine again, right? Yeah. So again, let me kind of. I'm not sure what natural is because Well again you're not going to elevate it very much on a small swing, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, when you go bigger you may elevate it more and you may need more fold, but the the for the focus here is getting that face square through the ball and getting the force down the corridor. And it, there you go, it's a feel. Driver, that angle of attack needs to be a little bit more sweeping through the ball instead of chopping. We're still bunting it, it just needs to be a little more sweeping. That was better, a lot better. Stay with it. Ah, 
lot better, yeah? Now hold the club in your right hand only. Okay, bring the club up. Okay, no, it's just straight up. Okay, now, about waist high. Club head about waist high. Take that club back and forth. Can you feel where that club face is facing? Yeah. Feel it in your right hand? You're right handed? Yeah. Okay, so when you do a two handed swing, I want you to feel it like that with the right hand. So put both hands on now. Can you still feel the right hand doing the work? Yeah. Okay. Try a 10 finger grip. Good. So do you feel it more with a 10 finger or, or you know, there's different grips we can try, but notice whether you can get that same feel with the 10 finger grip just like you did right hand only. To me actually, like you felt that you had some issues with your grip in the past. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with the, the alignment. The right hand's in a good alignment right now. But the fact that you, the way you overlap doesn't allow you to use your right hand the way that you want. Either 10 finger or reverse overlap will end up being better for you. Well, like this one. Exactly. And I don't care which one, but if you want your right hand to get the job done, use more right hand. Well, yeah, free can be loose, and loose can be out of control. So there's a, there's a balance between that. What's that? This feels more controlled, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve Jones won a U.S. Open with that grip. So it's not, un I mean, it's, it's uncommon, but it's not unheard of. It's very common with my students, actually, because I give them the opportunity. All my students, I have them try 10-finger, reverse overlap, overlap, and interlock, and I have them find out which one works best for them. If you've never used them, you'll never know, will you? Nope. But interesting that Actually, your, your buntings are getting better when your whole right hand's on the club. Yeah, I think the, I think the 10 finger actually does things. So. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not width, it actually improves the, the, the structure. It improves two things, the force and the structure. Good. So let's go a little bigger now. Maybe do like a two-thirds or three-quarter swing. Get that feel. Face force finish. Yep, face force finish. So you had the face force finish. But was it sweeping or was the plane crashing through the ball that time? Crashing. Yeah, the, if the club head was a plane, it crashed into the ground. It didn't sweep and take off, did it? So I, I want the plane taking off through the ball. Oh. So Why would I get down with a driver? Well, you swing down with most of your clubs. So the actually the other question would be, why wouldn't you swing up with a driver? Because every other club's going down, right? Yeah, I mean, but I don't, I don't you don't have to, but the habit would be to swing down, wouldn't it be? So get the plane taking off here. There you go. And we got to get on the matchup. Got to match up. Within that two degree window, face force finish. There it is. They were close enough. They were within a two degree window, so the ball went down the corridor with a little draw. Exactly. Yeah, they better both be moving at the same direction through the ball. Got it, yeah. There we go. That was the best one so far. Now that's sort of like your level one drive. If you just need to bunt one down the fairway, you just found it. So you need about two or three levels here. You need one where you feel like you can be very accurate and bunt it down the middle when you need it. Then you need that sort of just stock swing that you use 70% of the time, which is a, a bigger swing, bigger finish than that. And then maybe one where we really get a real strong launch and go for more power. Ideally, we'd have three levels, okay? But well, that was a great swing right there. Let's get that feel. Face, force, finish. 
You notice I'm not as concerned with the squat turn launch now. Right. And the reason is, is I'm more concerned with you managing that club face and the force. Because as the club goes, it gets longer, you got to be better at managing the club face and the force. Okay? Now I'm hoping that some of the squat and turn and launch just kind of work their way in. There we go. Face force finish down the corridor. Yeah? I mean, can you imagine a few short holes at your club where that drive will work for you? Absolutely. We've got at least four of them here at uh, Inverness. You know, first hole, second hole, tenth hole, you know, eleventh hole, and eighteenth hole. Actually, those five holes I play that shot at on.